Yes. Okay. okay. Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, May 17, 2017. <laughs> Here, Karen, here, Barbara and Ralph gave previous notice. Uh, Tim, here, Carolyn, here, Yeti, here. Okay, thank you. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing on our agenda is the consent agenda. So I do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes minutes of the regular board meeting of April 19th, 2017, and the minutes of the special board meeting on April 26, 2017. We needed to remove the payment of those from the consent agenda because a few of the figures have changed. Do I have a motion? So Patty? Yes. Okay. Second. Second Karen? Okay, does anyone want either of these items removed from the consent agenda? Okay, Diane, please take a roll. Okay, so it's Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, I will now hear a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $225,417.82. Payroll expenses of $283,634.47 and a special reserve expense of $17,612.68 for a total monthly expense of $526,664.97. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Oh. Second. Motion. Oh, you motion first? Yeah. Okay, Tim and then Patty. And for Karen, Karen said it. Karen? Okay. Yeah, like her, yeah. Tim and Karen. I'm generous. Thank you. Okay, Susan, um, do you or Greg want to call us by the number to change? Yeah, that's great. All right, thank you. Okay, so we've had some turnover in um, in the administrative team. As we all know, Kathy Coy retired uh, uh, at the beginning of the month. Uh, the last effective day was uh, April 28th. Uh, we were a week without a person, and then we hired a new person, uh, Lissandra Strickling. Um, <coughs> Lissandra and I put the uh, accounts payable uh, listing together, and as is our habit, we continue to audit and make sure that all of the uh, bills were appropriately accounted for and were going to the right uh, vendor and, and so forth. Uh, through that process, we found uh, some uh, data entry errors. And um, if you look at the new listing that's in front of you, uh, the uh, landscape listing of, uh, of checks, and you direct your attention to the far right uh, column, um, you'll see that there are a few checks that are voided. Those are checks that had to be, uh, that had to be voided because they were incorrect. And then at the uh, end of the list, you'll see two new checks which were uh, drafted to uh, Amazon and to Visa that were correctly, uh, correctly reflected uh, of the amounts that uh, should be paid to those two members. Um, uh, the overall impact is that there was, there was an increase in the payables um, or the, the bills that we're paying by approximately $200 from the original uh, draft of the list. Um, but, you know, we found some additional bills that had not been accounted for correctly and rather than risk uh, paying an interest uh, charge with either Amazon or uh, Visa, we wanted to get those two correct so that we could, you know, avoid those charges, uh, which would be unnecessary. Any discussion? Okay, Susan, you chose three void of the year? You said, you I said think there are five. There are five total. Uh, there are okay. On the first page, I see three. Right, and I think there are two more. The okay, five. I see. Okay. Yes. Thank you. It's just Google. They just want everything to be clear to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Can I please Linda. Yes. Karen. Yes. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. 
Okay. All right. The next thing on our agenda is swearing in our new library trustees. So, very exciting. Um, since we don't have our secretary here, which would have been Barb, uh, she would have been the switch. So we uh, have Diane, who was our notary. So she will be first swearing in Dennis. So if you could stand here with Diane, please. I'm Dennis Martin. I'm Dennis Martin. To solemnly swear that I will support. That I solemnly swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Trustee. Of the Office of Trustee. <laughs> Of the Niles Public <coughs> Library District. Of the Niles Public Library District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So, yeah. <laughs> Diane Olson. I, Diane Olson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee of the Office of Trustee of the Niles Public Library District to the best of my ability. Of the Niles Public Library District to the best of my ability. Thank, thank you. Thank you. First, I just want to say thank you for <coughs> voting me in to serve as your president for the last two years. It has been very memorable and very fulfilling experience. So I want to thank you. And uh, now we will be voting for our new officers. So we will hold the election of officers beginning with the election of the board president. So nominations are now in order for the office of the president. So do we have any nominations? Karen. Karen. You'd like to nominate Karen? Yes, I would. Okay. Karen, do you accept the nomination? Um, I accept the nomination. Do we have any other nominations? Okay. Then we can just probably do a verbal vote of yays or nays. So if we want to just do that, is that okay? Or do we have to go around? Why don't you just take a roll? Okay. It might be easier. Uh, Karen votes two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Carolyn? Yay. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yay. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Do I continue? No. We, all right, do you want to finish all the nominations? Okay. All right, so now nominations are now in order for the office of the vice president. Um, is there any one nominee uh, that anyone would like to nominate for vice president? I'd like to nominate for vice president. I would accept the nominee. Any other nominations? Okay, then we can just take a roll. Karen? Uh, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. Uh, nominations are now in order for the Office of Secretary. So if we can have uh, any nominations for the Office of Secretary. I'd like to nominate them. Okay, we have one nomination for Diane Olson. Any other nominees? Okay, we can just go around the board, around the table. I didn't hear Oh, Diane, <laughs> you accept the nomination? She was <laughs> 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 to me. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> 
No, go ahead, Diane. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, uh, nominations are now in order for the Office of Treasurer. So, any nominations for Treasurer? Uh, yes, I would like to nominate Tim. I accept Tim, you accept still being the treasurer for I us? Do. Okay. All right, uh, any other nominations? I don't know if we can just take another roll. So, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, thank <laughs> you. Good luck. First thing I'd like to do as president is, is thank Linda Ryan uh, for serving as our president during the past couple of years. And it really is extra work to be a president. You have to stay fully awake during the meetings. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, not that we all do. Uh, that was difficult. <laughs> but uh, it certainly is an extra job, and thank you very much for for doing that work uh, during the past couple of years. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. All right. Uh, has anyone registered for public comment? No. No, no comment? Okay, all right, fine. Then we will move to the ne next matter on the agenda. Um, at our last meeting, um, Greg was uh, not with us, and Tim gave us the treasury report and offered to fully give that report in the future. So, Tim, are you prepared with tonight's treasury report? I am. Since you are and were the treasurer, um, we will proceed. Okay, thank you. Right. Tim, can I ask what page we're flipping to? Here? Well, or there's, uh, is this different? yeah, the only thing you really need to flip to is the, uh, the budget, uh, monthly budget. So, since okay. uh, I, I am preparing it, uh, maybe we need to talk about this a little bit. Okay. But, um, I, I, I Get the information from from Greg and Susan a little bit diff, uh, late in order to get a written report into the um, budget into our packet. So I would give a verbal verbal report, and I was going to make sure that Dan got a copy of the verbal report so that it'll be in the um, it'll be part of our documents. Unless anybody's got a real serious issue with that. Okay. okay, so if we're looking at the budget, uh, at this point we are currently in our 10th month of the fiscal year, which means we are at 83.3% point of the budget. So, you know, that's kind of a, a figure that you look at as you go down the, the, the percentages of um, uh, revenues and percentages of Expenditures. Now, yes. Um, I think looking around the table, I think people are having a hard time finding the page. Oh, I'm sorry. That, one, that would be page 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Consolidated income statement. Yes. You? Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Page 19. Thanks. All right. All right. Good. All right. Again, as, as uh, we are uh, in our 10th month, which would be 83.3% the way through of our current year's uh, budget. So uh, as you go down those figures, obviously uh, some things are paid uh, one time, so, so that would be greater than the 83%. Uh, some things are not paid fully, so there's a little bit of a give and take on those percentages. Uh, so anyway, uh, our revenue is a little higher than expected, primarily due to an increase in our collected property taxes and the investment income. So I do thank Greg for that investment income bump. That's great. Uh, the monthly payroll is slightly higher than the budgeted. That's due to a five-week month, but overall the salary expenditures are right on target, which is great. Library operating expenses account, which is uh, on page 20. 
uh, is under budget due to lower per capita expenses, lower software, and lower uh, printing costs. These lower line items are somewhat overset by the higher processing supplies incurred with reformatting part of the collection. However, due to, uh, the total of the library operating expenses account is well under budget. So we do it. Uh, the next page, page 21, general and administration. Those expenses are also under budget due to decreased spending for legal fees, consultants, promotional items, trustee expenses, and office supplies. Right. And our uh, building and equipment maintenance account, which is on page 23, uh, and generally what I'm doing is just the highlights of, of things that are obviously under or obviously over. So, But the uh, building and maintenance account, the repairs and maintenance line item is higher than we had budgeted due to an un unanticipated HVAC expenditures from the loss of some of our vintage 1989 pumps and motors. And I'm heartbroken to think that 1998 is vintage. <laughs> All right, the non-contractual maintenance is over twice the year to the year day budget due to an engagement of a cleaning company on a month-to-month -month basis to perform the overnight cleaning as a result of losing an employee due to a back injury. However, again, these accounts are well under budget. Does anybody have any questions on the financial report? I have one question. Sure. Under consultants, year to date actual is forty five thousand four seventy five. Could you explain what that is? What was it then? Consultants, page twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, where our consultants we had as far as I know, uh, we can correct this, but those were our uh, for our, our strategic plan, right? So strategic plan was forty-five thousand year to date. I would have to look at that. I'll tell you what. I'll write that down, and I will get back to you on that number. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions about budget? All right. The next item on the agenda is the director's report. Uh, Susan, can you uh, tell us your report and also tell us if there's any communication? Certainly. Um, I keep it very short. Um, as some of you know, we are going to have an oral history recorded on Saturday of the original board president, Mr. Rudolph Hazuka and his wife, Winifred Hazuka, whose idea apparently it was originally to, that we needed to have a library in this community. And so they are going to be working with Neil O'Shea, who has done all of the Veterans History Project oral histories. So I think that would be great. And it's going to be video recorded, and we're really excited to get a chance to hear from them. Um, he's been doing all kinds of research. And then um, the only other thing I wanted to do is uh, I asked all the supervisors to be here tonight, and all but one was able to, and I'm going to pass out copies of our org chart so that you can kind of follow along. Pass out copies of the org chart. And they, I asked them to give like a 45-second recap of what they do in their department. Um, and so we're going to go in the order of the org chart so that you can follow along. But I'll wait till we all have them. I just want to thank all the staff for being here. I know this is a funny your regular day, but it, it really helps us, especially since we have new people here, to know who you are and put your face with your okay. name, hopefully, and what it is that you do. So, thanks. Excuse me, Susan. Can you just tell uh, when, are, when is um, the founders of the National Library? What time? And They're arriving at 1.30. So it starts at 1.30? Saturday yeah, it's not going to be like an open event, but if you guys wanted to come and introduce yourselves, I think that would be certainly very appropriate. Oh, oh, oh so they're just going to enter. They're, they're, they're just being recorded. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. When, oh, when oh, okay. you know, talk to people, it's over a course of some time. I see. And, yeah. Okay. Their daughters so it's not, so yeah. it's not like on the stage or anything. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Let's go together. I kind of misunderstood. Okay. The first supervisor to speak is uh, actually my assistant director, Cindy Rodman. So my name is Cindy Rademacher and I'm an assistant director and my responsibilities include um, oversight of programming on a library-wide basis. Um, so I do uh, oversight and analysis of programming 
I also um, oversee the library volunteer program and the database that we use to manage it. Um, and I'm serving as the internal point person with CCS, our consortium, and also the point person for the migration to a new ILS system with Polaris next spring. So, so can you tell us how many volunteers we have working for the Niles Public Draw Library? Um, well, in the database we have a couple of hundred. Um, we have actually, during the summer, we have a couple of hundred teens. Um, on a monthly basis, that's always in the statistics report. So it roughly goes from 80 to 100 uh, on different months. Actively volunteering? Yes. Great. Many volunteers are doing one hour a week. Thank you. Thank you. And this will be Sasha Vasilic. Hello, everybody. Sasha Vasilic, Head of Public Relations and Marketing. Uh, the marketing team consists of four of us me, the supervisor, uh, marketing coordinator, graphic designer, and a digital content coordinator. We are responsible for the marketing of the library, public relations, library branding. Um, the majority of the print materials is here on the library, uh, the newsletter. Uh, in charge of the website, social media, electronic signs, so basically any form of communication to uh, the patrons of the library district comes through the marketing department. Thank you. Thank you. Is a newsletter, are you talking electronic or the hard, hard copy? Well, actually, we do do the e newsletters as well, just yeah. to point that out, but also the hard. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Dabrowski, I do maintenance, security, um, anything under the roof, the vintage equipment we work on <laughs> occasionally, um, just anything under the roof, curb to curb, if whatever needs to get fixed, we fix and we try to keep everybody happy and make them one big happy family. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I know you've had your playful with the remodeling uh, yes. that we've done over the past couple of years, yep. so thanks. Okay. Can I ask one question? Are you the only person in your department? No, I'm sorry. I have. Um, one full time and four part timers. Um, okay, great. Great. Right. Yeah. Uh, my name is Athena Krauss. I'm the head of patient services. We currently have a department of 37. Uh, I have pages and clerks. Pages would be the ones if uh, patrons place holds, they retrieve it from the shelves. Um, they're responsible for uh, shelving the return materials as well as any shifting projects of so books and speed moving around. That's the pages. Um, the clerks are more the front end. They welcome patrons, help with the automated handling system, checking in and checking out, as well as providing service at the front desk. Uh, we're the department that takes any money transactions, um, library cards, registered patients for program. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. uh, the next person is actually Dodie Frisbee, who has a happy family event, so she's not here tonight, but I'll just briefly say that she's the head of adult services. She has two desks that she has to manage, the one up here on the adult nonfiction floor and the one on the second floor, which is the um, fiction and a audiovisual department. She also manages outreach, and that's her original department, so that the people in that department are the ones that pull loans for the homebound people, work with them to get the materials that they need, and also deliver things to the schools. I do a lot. Susie. My name is Susie Wolf. Um, I am the head of the digital services department. We have eight people on our team. Uh, we have a, a assistant department head who manages all of our online databases. So that is a big undertaking and our digital collections. So ebooks, audiobooks, uh, magazines, streaming videos. Um, in addition to that, we also have a training librarian who does a lot of the classes, but has also started working with the staff to kind of teach them how to use the equipment here in the building. Uh, we staff the technology desk, which is in the lower level, and we typically have two people on desk at all time. It is very busy, constantly teaching people how to use their email, how to use the scan station, and then we check out the digital equipment to them as well. Uh, we provide assistance in the creative studio. Um, so we have two studios, Studio A, which is right by the tech desk that's kind of used uh, for two or three people at a time for small projects, and Studio B is our training lab. Um, and then we offer a multitude of classes and programs on a range of technology topics from, you know, starting an email to, you know, Photoshop and anything in between. Susie, so I understand your staff does some classes, but you bring in some outsiders too sometimes, don't you? We do, yeah. What is the one we've seen lately? Fire? Are they, you know, they're 
is that? Oh, Fire Logic. Fair Fire Logic. They Fire Logic is a local agency that does technology mm -hmm. help, and so he does the programs here for free. Okay. Um, and which right. is very nice, and he's Derek is very, you know, very revered. He's really good, too. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Thank you. And who is the other library? Uh, Ruth is our library. Yeah, so Ruth and Darlene came from the Adult Services Department, and so this is a new department for them, um, but they are still doing their roles. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So my name is Erin Carey, and I am the head of Youth and Teen Services. We serve birth through age 18. We manage two spaces. We're in the kids' space on the first floor to walk in through the Rainbow Arch. Um, and we also manage the teen underground. And the teen services used to be split between uh, adult services and kind of the AV department. So um, we're kind of a new team as well. It's kind of interesting uh, to have that dynamic. So we not only maintain the space during our uh, daytime hours and our after school hours and our evening hours, we also are maintaining our collection. We're uh, studying the review journals and uh, making sure that our collection is full and that we have the materials that our patrons are looking for. We are also uh, weeding the older materials and things that are out of date. We also plan and manage all the programming that happens. If you look through chapter one, we do fit into pages, but my goodness, we're bursting at the seams with STEAM activities uh, in the Wonderground. That's a weekly activity and after school activities for um, all ages. We also have a full lineup of story times where we serve uh, birth through during the day, usually five and six year olds. Um, I think we have a really robust lineup of activities and materials, and we're always go ahead. open to. Oh, go ahead. Sir. Okay. Um, we're open to uh, the next adventure with kids and serving the uh, population here and uh, helping support schools as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come yeah. see us. <laughs> and last but not least, Victoria. Who is also a trustee, by the way. Oh, right across the street. Yeah. A lot of different hats. Um, so I'm the head of technical services, and um, we have 12 employees, including myself. We have four uh, part time and eight full time. Our department consists of like sub little sub departments, so it starts with acquisitions, and they do the ordering, receiving, invoicing, dealing with our vendors, getting all of the orders that come in from the selectors from all the departments in the library, getting those orders placed in, into our database. Then it moves on to the cataloging um, department, and we do all of the bibliographics, so like the old school card catalog that's now digital. All that information is put in by the catalogers and it's um, shared through the consortium so we share the work so each person has each group has like some expertise we have a cataloger on staff um, uh, betty zahn who catalogs in 12 languages and she does all of our foreign language materials and she contributes to worldcat and her um, records are used all over the world um, then and that provides access to, for everybody. So if somebody's looking up Johnny Depp, we have a control heading. So you get the precise heading for Johnny Depp, not, you know, Johnny B. Depp, and you can't find any, um, all of his movies. You can find them all in one place. We do the processing of all the books, so we make them look nice with the stickers so people can find them, and we work with all the other departments, um, patron services, to make sure they can get the material shelved, and they're how adult services and youth services would like them. We work on special projects. We do all of the withdrawals. We do the periodicals um, and the repairs. So all of the collection development and weeding they do, it eventually comes back for us to withdraw them. Some of them go into the book sale, um, and other ones go into, um, go back for, um, we have a company that comes in and recycles it and sells them to another party and we get a little bit of money back from that too. Um, and another thing I do is I, uh, I'm the head of the display in our community. So the little the displays you see yes, out there, uh, that's my baby. I know. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I wonder how we got that one. <laughs> so, I was like, hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, but that's it. Thank you very much. So that is all.
Thank you. 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 Th
Um, okay, so we have a motion on the table now. And um, it looks like this section is from the Public Library Trustee Manual 2016. And who publishes that, Tennessee? Can you tell us that? Is it the uh, public library? It, the managers of the state libraries got together and did one together, and then each state has adopted their own. So Illinois, the Illinois State Library has published this, but really it's more of a nationwide set of standards for um, library trustees. Okay, all right. So um, this was sent out in our packet um, a few days ago. Did our uh, new trustees get a copy of this? Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Um, so, are there any um, comments or discussion regarding the proposed effective board meetings policy procedures and guidelines? That is. Okay. Um, hearing none, then I will ask for a roll call. Carolyn. Uh, yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Thank you. All right, let's turn to the next item on the uh, agenda, which is 13B, is to approve the appointment and payment to McClure and Sura and Company chartered in the estimated amount of 16400 to perform the audit of the Niles Public Library for the year ending June 30th, 2017. Uh, do I have a motion? I have a motion. Second. All right, um, so this is the audit that we have done every year, is that correct? And this is the same firm that's done it for to, at least several years, perhaps many, more than that. Less four. Less four. Okay, all right. Do we have any other comments or questions regarding the motion on the table? Mm -hmm. I have one question on page 49. Um, and one, two, three. in the fourth paragraph, it's uh, or third paragraph, sorry, the last line, the additional fee for the implementation year is $1,500. Mm -hmm. So is it just a one-time fee, you know, or will this be just reduced a little bit, or will it go away? Uh, so the way um, the way that lending firms work is that anytime there's a material change, uh, and this year we had a material change, which was the adoption of IMRF. Right. They usually have to do some extra work around that to assure themselves and to assure everybody that they're reporting to that it's been accounted for correctly and it's reflected appropriately in the footnotes of the financial statements, which are issued at the end of the process. So essentially, their estimate of $1,500 is what I call uh, the setup fee uh, for this in the initial year. Um, but uh, this is very similar to the additional fees that were paid uh, to McClure and Sarah during the uh, years that we were working on the uh, renovation. Because, you know, it's material change, extra work, extra transactions, things that they wanted to spend some additional time taking a close look at. And we saw when that was complete and we reopened the library and had the grand opening, the, the fees then dropped. Um, and as a result. So my expectation is that uh, much of this will go away in, in the following years. Okay, thank okay. you. Sir, sir, yeah, for me. No, no other questions. All right, any other questions? Um, may we have a roll call then? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. 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 All right, continuing on with our new business, this is uh, 13C. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the recommended renewal of the health care insurance plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield for our employees beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending on June 30th, 2018? I make the motion. Second. Okay, all right, now that that motion is on the table, we do have these materials uh, in front of us showing um, what we paid last year, what we um, are expected to pay this year, the percentage changes. Does anyone have any questions? Mm 
I, I have a question. Is, and I should know this, but I'm sorry, I don't. Is this a PPO or a, what is? What type of coverage is this? It's a it's a PPO. It's, okay. It's a high deductible plan. Okay. Uh, the deductible is uh, 2,500 for single, uh, 5,000 for family. And if you remember, um, uh, the board instituted a number of years ago uh, a health reimbursement account for the employees. Uh -huh. So what that does is it pays from the 500 first dollar to the 2,150th dollar so that the employees are, uh, that are participating are responsible for the first 500 of deductible in the last 350. Oh, okay. Those numbers, all those numbers double for anything beyond single coverage. So plus spouse, plus children, plus family, those numbers are double. Okay. Um, every year what we look at is, um, is the amount of money that we spend on the HRA and compare it to a $500 deductible plan. Okay. To make sure that we're not doing something which we could do cheaper otherwise. And uh, it's always uh, an additional $100,000 or $110,000 in cost compared to actual reimbursements of about $60,000 that we pay in the, uh, uh, throughout the year. So we're always money ahead you know, by making it look like a $500 deductible plan for using the HRO. Okay. Does that answer your question? I think it does. So if, a, let's say, a, an employee with spouse and child, they would be liable for up to $6,000? I mean, they could take that out of a health care. They would, uh, their deductible, um, they would be responsible for the first thousand, okay. and then the last 700. The thirty-three hundred dollars in between would be uh, would be paid or reimbursed by the HRA. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. You thought you had it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, my company does exactly the same. Do thing. they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's high deductible, but they then get the employees down on the Okay. To offset it. All right, well, uh, are there any other questions? Then uh, may we roll? Okay, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Carolyn. I'm thinking. Oh, sorry. So if, can I just make sure I understand? So it's going to cost us $3,300 per employee in that range for a spouse and a child, and then it varies for everyone else? Uh, only if they use it. If they have no claims, there is no cost. And this is for health insurance? Uh, that's correct. Pretty much everyone uses. What's our annual cost then? Uh, it's right there in... Uh, 500000 In the note, yeah. We expect it to be... Mm -hmm. uh, we calculated 520000 approximately. Uh, mm -hmm. In the budget, it's 530000 uh, You know, we, we typically, during the year, have you know, people that are in or out of the plan, so that extra 10,000 is to try to accommodate uh, those types of transactions. And, and the increase was four point something, I don't know, I saw some percentage from last year. What was the increase? Um, so, you know, increases are kind of a funny thing. What I prepared, uh, uh, prefer to look at is, is the total calculated uh, increase or change year over year. So if you look at uh, if you look at the number of people who are currently enrolled and you do the math, we're comparing uh, this year's expense of $520,000 to last year's expense at, at, uh, at last year's rates of uh, $493,000, which is approximately a $27,000 uh, change. At $27,000 yields a blended increase of 5.4%. Okay, so the 2017-18 total is approximately 520,000. That's correct. Okay, thanks for that. Okay. So did you do a total? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the next matter on our agenda is closely related to what we just talked about, and this is to approve the recommended price tags be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1st. So, um, do I have a motion to approve the recommended price tags to be charged for health insurance beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending on June 30th, 2018? Patty? 
second. Okay. Right, do we have any questions on this matter? This is on the, the next page, 51. Hearing no questions, may I have a roll call? Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Okay, I'm confused. Don't we just vote on that? No, um, if, if uh, for some reason it's sort of broken into two parts. Um, one is the total cost and what we're purchasing, and now we're discussing how much of that cost our employees are going to pay, what their premium, or what their, not their premium, what well, their, their share of the yeah, their premium is going to be, pretty much. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Before we were talking about the deductible, now we're talking about the premium. And their premium is where on these documents? This is going to be on page 51. Okay. So an individual employee would pay up on the top it says 46. Um, or do you think that's 2017, 18 is 96. So just an employee without any benefit, without any dependents, it's ninety-six dollars per month. Per month, correct. It's ten percent of the uh, total cost. The total cost is approximately nine hundred and sixty dollars a month. You know, I'm familiar how, how costly these are. Okay, well, thanks for that explanation. Now I know what we're doing. Okay, yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, now we're moving to item E and talking about other types of insurance. So now I am asking for a motion to approve the recommended purchase of liability and workers' compensation insurance um, for the total amounts of $58,943 for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. Do you have a motion? Patty? Mm -hmm. Second. Yeah. All right. Any questions on this matter? Can I get an explanation of what it's actually costing us? I thought I saw some figures that were sort of contradictory. So this is for the Workman li oh, liability and workman's cap is liability, um, dismemberment, and that no. no, it's something else. Yes. Okay, maybe that's where I saw the difference. Yes. Okay. So would this be like if someone slipped and fell on our property? Yeah. So uh, this is generally uh, property and casualty. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, uh, the. Uh, any damage to the buildings covered, any damage like slip and falls, as you, as you mentioned earlier, that's also covered uh, as well, uh, whether it's an employee or uh, a patron. Well, an employee um, would probably be a worker's cap, right? Which is in there. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we also have uh, something called the commercial crime, which basically covers the board. Um, so it's like directors and yes, exactly. insurance? Yes, okay. exactly. Directors and officers insurance, I see. Uh, this also includes our auto policy. Uh, or our uh, van? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and then we have an umbrella of, uh, I can't remember the number off the top of the head, I see five million dollars or something like that, uh, of additional insurance. And that place. covers all types of insurance? Yes. Uh, the umbrella? Yes. Okay. okay. Are there other questions? I just had one. Is this the insurance you were talking about? You mentioned, I think, at our um, budget that there were a couple of claims, so it would be higher this year. Yes. If you look at um, if you look at workers' comp, which is uh, well, I don't know fourth or fifth line of the bottom, yeah. uh, it went up twenty four percent. Last year we paid twenty two thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars. This year, uh, the bid is twenty-seven thousand four hundred and eighty-nine, and the reason that it uh, that it has increased is because we did have um, an employee who uh, had a back injury, uh, was covered by workers' comp, went through rehab, and you know things of that nature, therapy to uh, uh, mitigate his uh, his injury. Uh, we also had an employee, another employee who. Uh, uh, did a slip and fall in the back hallway. Uh, she had a knee injury, and same type of thing, where we, you know, where we made sure that uh, you know she was uh, taken care of appropriately by the insurance company. Okay, thank you. 
Any other questions? Okay, yes, I just have a quick question. Um, I know when we have gone through our health insurance, we've compared to other companies and we found that this grandfather piece has really just been the best in time. Have we checked with the workman's comp insurance and checked comparables to see if this is the best? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will tell you that because of the one year, um, we have uh, several of the companies uh, would not fit, would not even deal, send a price. Oh, because if we had a claim. Uh, we had two claims. Yeah. Uh, so they wouldn't, you know, wow. you know so, Crazy. Uh, you know, as the clock was winding down, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we had a conversation with Hartford Insurance and convinced they didn't even want to and really? we them to read it. Well, wow. you know, anytime there's a claim for, uh, for workers' comp, the uh, insurance company want, the company wants to know what are you doing to stop this? Okay. Um, in the one case, uh, an employee stepped off of a stair, his foot landed funny, twisted his back, and I don't know what, you know, I mean, the stairs have, you know, not slip shreds on them and carpeting on the, you know, the base and so forth. So there's not a lot to do in order to uh, prevent that. I mean, that employee is no longer with us. Uh, in the other case, um, uh, the hallway was clear. It was flat. It still is flat. Uh, nothing, you know, obstructing um, uh, this employee's path. Um, I sensed that she didn't pick her foot up all the way. She had, you know, rubber sole shoes, kind of stuck, and she fell. So, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know what kinds of things we could do to prevent those types of, those types of injuries. And, um, you know, with the way, you know, that the insurance markets work is, you know, they do really want to see something and that's why they were so productive to that. So we should be thankful that we have a company that's insurance. <laughs> yeah, I never, was, I never really want to be in that particular position. Right, but, yeah, right. I mean, but we did take it to market. We did try, in answer to your question, mm -hmm. uh, our broker did take it to market and try mm -hmm. to get competing bids and so forth and uh, just wasn't, you know, wasn't successful. Okay, all right. Well, well maybe in a couple of years we can get competing bids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, possibly. Does the company ever make any recommendations on what to, what to do or try? In terms of? Sure. As far as, well, you know, To fix the solution. Yeah. To make this a solution. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, you know, we have. Not, not the library, but the, the, work the, the, the workman's kind of. What are they Do they uh, ever say, oh, yeah, well, could you do this, this, and that? Yeah, so um, in the case of the slip and fall in, in the back hallway, um, you know, the, the, the natural inclination is, well, it happened, I believe it happened uh, while it was cold outside. Yeah. Maybe the floor was wet. Yeah. Um, uh, Dave, uh, our uh, supervisor of uh, our facility supervisor, uh, makes sure that that floor is cleaned regularly. You know to make you know to make sure that these kinds of things don't happen. I mean, you know, yeah. we've gone through all sorts of scenarios, but I don't, you know, there really isn't anything to it. I mean, it could be flatter. It's, you know, I know. Accident, you know, I, I mean, I hate to, you know, I hate to say it, it accidents yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, you know, my preference is to drill down and say, okay, there's a problem, something happened, sure. and how do we stop yeah. it from happening again? And, uh, yeah, there really isn't. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Then I think we need a motion. I mean, we need a roll call. Okay, here. Yes. Yes. Caroline? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So the next item on our agenda, 13F, is discuss revisions of policy 3.02, library rules. We don't happen to have anything in uh, materials about that. So you have something for us, do you, Susan? Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. The red is what we're changing? Oh, yeah. Um, so, I brought this not as. Sorry. 
I, I brought this not as a recommended change, but to get an idea of what the board would like to do about it. Because um, the, the two-page document is our current policy. Simple, easy. Um, but we had asked Dennis to look at the, the paragraph on business activities, because that has come up and we were trying to decide what the best wording was to allow people to go about normal business activities in the library without opening the door on all kinds of business activities. Uh -huh. Well, I got back this from, which, Dennis? from Dennis, which is kind of everything in the kitchen sink. And um, Dennis the lawyer. Dennis, yes, yes, Dennis, yes, a different Dennis. Thank you. Yes, Dennis. Well, <laughs> <Walton laughs> Jenkins. And you know, they're they are always thorough. They're just trying to protect the library about everything, so that you can always point to things and say, "Well, we said here that you can't do this. We said here that you can't do that." But to my mind, this is a little more thorough than I was looking for. It gets into the detail of making <coughs> and, and you know, no littering, no gambling. No concealing library materials, no lying prone on furniture. Pushing, it's, shoving. Yeah, so in the past we have relied more on the idea that you cannot cause a disturbance. And so that many things fall under the umbrella of causing a disturbance in some way or other. This to me it is, you know, I, I kind of, I, for one thing, I don't agree with all of the rules. But for the other, like, I think patrons should be able to move the furniture to a limited extent if they want to. Um, it, I, I just, this to me was too much, but we did pay the lawyer for it. I thought I should bring it to you and see if you want it to be this detailed, in which case I will bring it to you next month to pass it more or less as it is. Otherwise, I will take the parts of it that I think are, you know, would be good to be stated more clearly. And there are a few things that staff might want to point to as, you know, being things that are not allowed. Um, but I just wanted to get your sense. Mm. Well, this is a lot to absorb. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to <laughs> Well, and if you want, you can take it back tonight and uh, give me your feedback at the next month, and I'll bring it to the July meeting. And it's really, it's okay. not impressive. We have a perfectly fine set of library rules in order right now. So, Okay, so we have our rules. We have uh, Dennis the Lawyer's rules. Um, could you perhaps, in the packet, um, send us what you think? What you'd like to see is a revision. You said you had an idea. Yeah. So then we'll have three three options in front of us. Stay the same, change a little bit, change a lot when we come to our June meeting. Yeah. Is that acceptable to everyone? Sounds good yeah. to me. Sounds good. Yes. All, right. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we don't need a motion on that matter now. So yes. but we'll turn to the next uh, matter in our agenda, which is item G. And for this, I need a motion to allow vendors to set up tables and sell goods during the special library event, Fandom Fest, Comics and Pop-Up Culture, on August 19, 2017. Um, can I have a motion to get this on the table? Patty? Mm -hmm. yep. Susan, tell us more about this event. OK, um, well, I don't know if you're familiar with the idea of a Comic Con, but it is, um, they're big events. They're extremely popular these days. There are a couple of uh, in Chicago, and this one is actually set for the week before the second of the two Chicago ones. People get dressed up in their favorite costumes, like you know Wonder Woman or Spider Man or Harry Potter. Or uh, actually, the two chairs of the committee are sitting here right now. It's Ariana and Victoria, and um, but part of that is always having people selling memorabilia and movies, and uh, you know they, it's vendors have these things, and they typically set up a table. So um, what we envision doing is having them sign a disclaimer so that the library would not be responsible if somebody walked off with some of their materials or if they didn't keep good check track of their money or any of the possible things that could happen. It would be completely at their own risk. It would only be for the duration of this event. It would not be opening the door on any, anything else. But it was a big enough thing that I thought that I should ask the board for permission to do it. It's not a small waving is more of a right. giant one. Because I don't think we ever sell things inside the library other than like a books. See, uh, yeah, book to go, I, I, yeah, music CD to go with a musician who is performing and that's contained in the large meeting room and right. uh, you know they, they handle that themselves. That comes up, we have not done anything like this before, but it really is um, very much part of a Comic Con is to have this kind of thing going on. It's kind of, if you're doing it right, it's a three ring circus where there's stuff going on all over. And other as part of the interruption. Other libraries have them putting these on. Schomburg does it. Um, Arlington Heights. Uh, and they are uh, 
hosting this uh, artist alley where the artists are selling lithographs and there are some like mem memorabilia that is associated with these different fandoms and the comic scene. And so this is not the first time this might be happening in a library setting. Okay. As so, a waiver, uh, is there going to be something stated that it has to be appropriate for the library setting or that yes. you get? Yeah. We, can, that, we definitely don't want anything sleazy. Well, yeah. Yeah, because realistically, with some of this stuff, uh, it definitely could be out there. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, mean, I think they have a number of safeguards where they will have somebody at the door, you know, checking costumes and things like that. So. Um, well, I mean, some of the things the vendors might be selling. Yes. Too. Right. No, yeah. I understand it. Yeah. yeah. So we'll part. reserve the right to reject yeah. any items that yeah. people might want to sell here. Yeah. I mean, I would anticipate that if we warn them in advance that it's a library setting and they need to be appropriate, that they family would. library. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Good word. <laughs> Are we anticipating, or this is the first? You. It's been stated that other libraries have done this. What kind of a response do they have as far as people coming? Do we yes. have any? Well, it's just we already put it on our calendar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. we're anticipating. Uh, uh, I, I'm saying oh, yeah. I'm saying lowball 600 people, but I think we'll get over that. Yeah. 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 But, but there, there's a lot of talk of that, that your first time being totally overwhelmed with so people. So we're planning for it. We probably will have a parking problem. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Um, we're, we're asking the VIPs to uh, walk people back and forth across the street and uh, asking the staff to consolidate parking. There, there will be the same parking problem when we have our village block party across the street. Yeah, and right, right. I think. Yeah. Are we? Did we ask Culver if our overflow yeah. is over there? Is that? We'll be talking to Culver and Fifth Third. Yeah. And will there be signs letting people know they can park at Culver and okay. Fifth Third? Yes. Should we alert the neighbors? Oh, definitely. They might we'll need their patience. Well, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Of course, the one to come. Echoes are coming. This year, the community um, go. block party, the the village is actually putting new parking signs along the street, the the back street, to ward off frustrations with the neighbors. Is Stanley coming? He is not, but, <laughs> but, 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 I mean, yes. this is all, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Anime this stuff, is too. It. I mean, this is, this is it. Can I ask one Great idea. Perfect. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Phantom Fest. Okay, then. If if this wasn't a library, if this was the um, Rosemont, how would this be handled? In what sense? There would be an entrance fee for a little walk through the door, or would these particular vendors have to pay a fee? Um, well, that is a good question, actually. We had talked about the possibility of charging the vendors because normally they would be charging a fee, but we thought with this first year, not really knowing how it was all going to work, um, that we would not ask for a fee next year, but that uh, this year, but that if this is excess and we want to do it again next year, that next year we would probably ask them for a donation. Okay. Right. That's a good idea, only because I'm thinking they're going to make a fortune on what they're selling because this is such a hot event. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we should try to cash in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm just a thought. No, yeah, no, I, I think that's good thought because if this is that lucrative, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they're, they're providing money. Yeah. Our, 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 our objection this year was that we, when you charge something, you're selling something. You are selling something. We, we don't know what we're selling because we don't have numbers yet. Next year, we can say we have this headcount in this time frame. This is our suggested donation to the library. Are you interested in taking part in our event? My, uh, my co one concern here is also with the numbers, the liability issues, the possibility of damage to the property. You know, are we going to, if we're not charging, are we going to lose out here? Because realistically, with that kind of volume, could there be issues here? what we have all this insurance for. Well, <laughs> that is true. Well, and I 
mean, if it gets to a point, if we still have numbers, you can yeah. not let people in. Right, I mean, the point where it's not safe, we'll have to I mean, right. stop people you, from doing You're going to have to have probably, yeah, that kind of a situation yeah. planned for ahead of time. Is this going to cost us anything in terms of, like, do we have to have police traffic control mm -hmm. or anything Security. like that? Security. That was the, we, have a, we have a budget uh, for, as we do would for many programs, um, I'm not certain what the, what the suggested budget is for the security, um, for the VIPs, um, that's who we were going to contact. So can, can you explain what VIPs are? What are VIPs? The VIPs are, are the acronym that they are referring to, the security and police service. So they're volunteers, there's no charge for them. Right. Oh, okay, so we don't pay anything? No. Um, we don't pay anything if they come. There's a question sometimes whether they're, you know, they're not authorized as police officers, so it depends on the level of security that you need. Whether the VIPs can do it or not, but we can definitely ask. Sometimes I mean, they have to send an auxiliary officer who can actually buy the ticket or something. And then we have had police officers come and help out with the parking over here when the neighbors, you know, when people are parking in the way that they should be. And they, and they just, you know, help direct traffic and, you know, they're just. Well, I was looking for the uh, black car, right? Yeah. Was there mm -hmm. somebody else? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. So this particular was strictly to do with the vendor selling. All right. Well, do we have any more questions? Okay. What's the roll call? Uh, Karen. Uh, yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Kim. Yes. Linda. Yes. Chen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. My next item is H, approve intergovernmental agreement to establish the electronic content consortium. So do I have a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement to establish the electronic content consortium? Okay. Second. Linda. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? Uh, how about a, an explanation maybe? I'm not sure, sure what it means. Yes, what but you know, we have... Um, my media model where we, people can check out their books, their electronic books through Overdrive. I think probably a lot of you have tried that out. Good. Um, and when we first started doing that, we just talked about how there used to be a lot of small systems and then they, um, they all got consolidated into Rails. So when we first set up the consortium, it was through that system, NSLS. Then the system went away, but some of the consultants who worked there formed a nonprofit to manage the contracts. But over the years, the, all of those people are gone. The person that is running it is um, not as transparent as most of the libraries would like. And we have not gotten the accounting that we had hoped to get on how the money is being, you know, how the fees are being calculated and how it's being uh, spent. And so we, um, the, basically the library directors um, put their foot, feet down and said, we're going to put together a, an ad hoc committee to form an intergovernmental library agreement. And that's the this is the result. Um, they used um, Ansel Blink, the attorneys from Ansel Blink, through Rails to craft the and it's basically just to put a governance uh, structure in place so that we get to vote on things and we get to um, if we potentially could move to a different vendor someday or go along with other vendors someday if that was what we wanted to do. So it's not strictly my media ball. There might be come along other vendors that we would want to work with, but we want to retain control of our collections and we don't want to have given away any of our rights. So that's what this is intended to protect. Susie, did I get everything right? Susie, yes. after working on this committee. Yes. Yeah. So does this pretty much replace the North Suburban Library System? Uh, no, North Suburban has been gone for a long time. And we don't have an agreement with Libraries First, who's currently managing our, our My Media Mall contracts. So there's basically, it's all just kind of like being handled in a, they say, oh, there's an annual meeting coming up, and you know, we it, it's it's very very loosey goosey right now. This so we have to, to establish a consortium so that we can make a decision going forward what we want to do, what our rates are going to like. We, we don't even know if we have voting rights right now, so there's no agreement, there's no consortium right now because it was through the the old NSLS and okay, so just over time it kind of all disintegrated and so this is to try to put structure back around it. And they need 60 libraries, I believe, to join us. I think there's about 150 in my video. 
there's a lot of little ones in Southern Illinois as well. And are all of them trying to get involved in this? Yes, I mean, we're all part of it right now, so it's kind of, this is a little backwards. Sure. Um, but we are, if we would like to make some changes to the fee structure, any of that, the annual raises and stuff, we need to kind of have this governance in place so that we can vote appropriately. Right now, the library source is managing all of our voting. All right, so does, does this group have a name? Does, uh, right now it's the ECC, um, the Electronic Content Consortium. Okay, oh, I see, I see. We didn't want to call it My Media Mall. That's actually what it is, but My Media Mall is um, a name that Overdrive gave us. So in case we decided to go with a different vendor, we were going to stick with Electronic Content Consortium. Okay. So we did, we did charge a certain fee and then they just provide a certain do you want to explain that, Susie? How the uh, how my media mall currently works? Um, in what regard? Just real high level. Just I just wondered, did, you know, are we charged uh, fifty thousand dollars and they give us access to thirty-seven different uh, varieties of different? So, like Susan uh, stated, there isn't a lot of transparency. We're not really told what other libraries are being charged, what the fee structure is. Okay. So we pay a certain amount of money every year to get access to this consortium collection. Okay. So it's like fourteen thousand dollars, roughly, uh -huh. and then they pull all of that money from all the libraries. Everyone pays into that, and then they buy what we call consortium level titles yeah. for everybody to share. Yeah. And then we go and buy our own additional what we call advantage titles that are just for our library patrons. Yeah. Um, so there's a benefit to being consortium because you know they buy like six copies of the Mocking Bird, but they're not all going to be off the shelf all the time. Right. So there's always one sitting there for you. Um, and then that is managed by libraries first that do all of the ordering. But any any one, you know, so somebody from Glendale could pull from that same mm -hmm. group. If they're members, yeah. Yeah, yeah the member so libraries. There. So there's three big overdrive consortiums in the area. There's My Media Mall, which we're a part of, Media On Demand, and then e Media Library. So um, they're kind of, when overdrive kind of came into this mix, every library just kind of went with one, so there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to it. Um, but ours was through NSLS. And so it's interesting to see what they're pulling in if you get 14000 per library. Yes. We don't know. We don't. I don't know <laughs> what the libraries are getting. And right. unfortunately, they're not interested in mm -hmm. sharing that. Are any of the staff going to be on the library? I would like to. Um, I was uh, a head of the overdrive consortium called the Media Library for a number of years. So I'm pretty familiar with how it all works. And I've worked on this governmental agreement with four other, five other people. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It's the first step. Okay, so I, I, any other questions? And I think we do have a motion on the table. Um, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Uh, yes. Jenny? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, turning to our next item, item I, we're going to 1702. So this, uh, I need a motion to approve ordinance 17-02, which is a tentative ordinance providing for a budget and appropriations of the Niles Public Library District of County, Illinois. Actually, it will be the Niles Main District Library effective July 1st for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, Linda, I think you had your hand up She's going to be first, I'll be second. And, right. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, what so, does this start on? Pardon? Is this 66? the one on 66? Okay. Yes. Just verifying I'm at the right place. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> okay, so we did get the budget packet last time. And we have updated copy of the ordinance in our board packet, right? So um, there are some changes in the ones that are in the, in the packet as compared to the binder we received last month. Is that correct, Craig? Uh, that's correct. Um, Can you tell us what those changes are? Uh, certainly. Uh, there are some small changes. If you remember, um, at the uh, April 26 special meeting, I mentioned that um, there were still some bids that I was waiting for, the property and casualty insurance uh -huh. uh, being one of them uh, that we just saw earlier. So 
so if you look at uh, if you look at page uh, 69 mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know the li liability insurance at 29868 agrees with the motion that he's asked uh, earlier I had estimated that at thirty thousand dollars, so that's a change. Yeah. The uh, uh, workers' compensation insurance was estimated at twenty-three thousand. Uh, that's now twenty-seven uh, four eighty-nine again to uh, agree with the motion that we passed earlier. Uh, the audit fund uh, was fifteen thousand. I had estimated, and uh, I made it uh, sixteen thousand five hundred. It, it should be 16400 and I could make the change for 100 bucks, so we can let it stand. Uh, the, the engagement letter is for 16400 I also made, uh, I also made a couple of changes in the, um, page uh, 68. Um, total vehicle expense. Um, oh, that's a change I, I missed. I should have made that. I should have made that $100 uh, more because I got. That's where the $100 from, I guess. So I could, I could, I could make that. That should actually be, you know, like $44.35. Which where are you looking right now? Uh, middle of uh, page 68. Vehicle expense total. Okay. Okay, I had estimated uh, the insurance at fourteen thirty-five. It came in at fifteen eighty-six. Should actually be uh, forty-four eighty-five. That's what that should be. So that for the total there. Yeah. Uh, forty-four eighty-five. Um, and uh, but the last change I made was I moved uh, $2,600 out of materials and I put it into uh, general and administration uh, under the professional collection. Uh, we should just be involved there. And I am not saying that. Uh, well, do you want us to see if we have any other questions while you look at that, Yeah. Uh, and and uh, the 2600 is a zero, uh, zero net change because I took uh, 2600 out of materials. So, uh, the, you know, the periodicals and materials, uh, page uh, 67, actually, I think the uh, down uh, should be uh, should be lower by 2600. Oh, professional okay. collection ended up combined with the professional, professional development. development. Okay. It does. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 2600 went into professional development. 2600 came out of what again? Uh, it came materials. out of materials. Okay. So uh, uh, when I presented originally, the materials were 762 100, and on uh, page 67, the total was 759 500. Okay. Reflecting the reduction. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Greg, just, just because we have a couple of uh, new trustees, would, would you want to just sort of explain why the appropriations is like double what the budget is every year? What, what is the purpose of this? And um, can you maybe sure. just give us a little background on these two concepts and why appropriations is always roughly twice the budget amount. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, every year, um, Every year, management creates a budget and presents it to uh, the board. That budget is actually uh, what I like to refer to as a contract between the board and management in terms of what it will take them on the library over the, uh, the next 12 months for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. The appropriation is, 
has doubled to give us room uh, should we receive extra revenues to spend it in, uh, in different ways that would be unbound uh, by the appropriation. So, well, the appropriation. So to give us room in the appropriation, we double the budget. But, you know, so what we're telling the state, or the county in this case, actually, is that uh, we have a budget and it's X. We have appropriations, which we promise not to exceed, which is 2X. And so should we get a windfall, somebody, should, should somebody leave us the money, you know, for a specific purpose or something like that, and we have to perform, let's say, within the next 12 months, within yeah. this budget year, we have room to do all sorts of things, in, you know, as long as the board uh, is in agreement. So that's, that's roughly what, you know, what, what the story is. So it's just a rule of thumb, just yeah. doubling it. I mean, we never, we never get, almost never get near the appropriated amount. No. There have been like one instance, I think, where that was where the regarding retirement fund. Wasn't that correct? Yeah. So last. Uh, but that was the only time I can ever remember we got anywhere near the appropriation so, amount. Uh, but I can recall, maybe not. So uh, about the three years ago, when I started, I looked at this and I thought, okay, we could do a better job. We can get closer you know, uh, in a lot of these cases. And we did just that, you know, so we did, you know, not double, we did, you know, maybe 20, 30% more or something like that. And uh, particularly in the uh, area of, um, in the area of um, uh, employee benefits, where the benefits are driven by employee demand, we had worse experience than I anticipated. So we exceeded the amount. We had to go through a correction process in order to in order to make it right. So if you, if you exceed an appropriation um, by category, yeah. not by line item, but by category, what you need to do is go through another process which tells the county, okay, I said a dollar this time, but what I really ended up spending was two dollars. And you know, and it's, it's not that they are going to rule, but that you're telling them that you know, so when they get the report, everything chimes. Um, after that, we decided just to go back to doubling it. Okay. Just All in right. case. So, um, I want to give everybody, everyone an opportunity to ask some questions, but just so uh, I understand, what we're voting on here is a tentative budget. There will be a public hearing in June. Correct. But this would be the budget that would be published as our tentative budget that people could then look at and comment on. Correct. correct? Okay. All right. Um, would anyone like to voice any questions or comments? Um, I had one question. We were talking about, uh, I can't think of the wording I want to use, putting money now, because you said the one fund special fund needed money put into it at the April meeting, the special the meeting? IMRF? No, um, the building and site fund. Yes. Okay. So are you figuring that in this also so that? Um, okay, so that's that's a separate document. This deals just with the expenditure side of things. Okay. So we're authorizing the expenditures here. In November, um, what the board will do is consider what the tax levy should be for real estate taxes for uh, 2017 to be collected in 2018. Mm -hmm. At that point, what we'll do is, is uh, provide for funds to be directed to the building and site fund, which should, by all accounting, end up in a deficit at the end of this year. Okay, so forget about that until November. Yes. Okay, thank you. And, any other questions? Well, I had brought this up at the last meeting. Uh, a number of us said that we were interested in going to the uh, PLA meeting. Uh, and I was wondering if we should increase the trustee expense line item. Though it wouldn't go over the appropriation, so we could leave it at the budget amount. Uh, but um, so who, who actually is interested in going to PLA? And, uh, yes. Does anybody know right now? I would say I'd like to go since it's only held every two years. Right, right? right? yeah. I'm not sure if it's in March, right? Yes. I'm not sure. I'm probably thinking. You know, I, I, I'm not quite sure. So, sure. Um, it's kind of hard for me to. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I'm just trying to stick with one. You know, they, did, did they come back around local to like a local area? 
you know, I don't remember them ever doing a PLA in Chicago because they very often do ALA in Chicago. Okay. So I think PLA is no, usually in smaller PLA venues. The ALA is all of the libraries, which could be college libraries, legal, medical libraries, all yeah. of them. Yeah. PLA is only public library association. So it's a very focused conference, much, much smaller. ALA is huge, and that's very often in Chicago. PLA is never in Chicago, it's in smaller venues. What's the typical cost they have? About, I'd say, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars Flight and hotel is and that the more? I think the uh, uh, registration was 400 Yeah. Uh, and then uh, they didn't really have a big list of hotels yet. Okay. And how many so, do Do they have any opportunity? It's four days. Online? No. Okay. Yeah, you can get some of the handouts, but it's really not the same thing. It's being in the room. You yeah, talk so, to vendors yeah. a lot of it. So yeah, I think you're right. It probably is about 15, and maybe that yeah. isn't quite enough. Maybe we should bump. Is there Philadelphia? It's Philadelphia. Oh, that's nice. But me getting permission to take time off for a two-hour meeting is like almost impossible. <laughs> for going four days to Philadelphia, I don't think they'll approve it. Yeah, for four days, you just <laughs> as long as, as long as I'm still working. <laughs> So, yeah, um, it's, it's a costly, yeah. yeah. So uh, it looks like maybe now we have two people. I don't think either one of us are actually, you know, committing. We're definitely no, going to go. Not. But um, as long as we're thinking about it at this time, maybe we should bump the budget up a little bit. Um, that's not going to totally. Did they have other uh, stuff available that they they sent out or uh, on a regular basis that you know? advances your, your learning and people's Well, you know, we didn't have those videos. Remember that we right. saw those? Well, I don't know if that was PLA or some it's, other um, organization. Yeah, it's United for Libraries, which is a, the trustee arm of ALA. Uh -huh. yeah, and there are videos, and I can send you the link to those. Um, we actually are, watched a couple yeah. of them during board meetings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we could do that if you guys feel like there's time. I just wondered, you know, you, you mentioned something about vendors. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in my mind, I'm envisioning some type of a, a site or website that they have. And, well, probably the better choice for that would actually be to attend ALA when it is here in June, and that's a huge vendor floor. That's you know PLA is more focused, but the ALA has an absolutely enormous exhibit floor, and you could go to that very easily. It's a lot easier than going out of town. So if you only want to see vendors, ALA. Yeah, no, I, yeah. not specifically. I was just, just you know, yeah. No, it's great. It's a great opportunity, and PLA is more focused. But yeah, you could just go to the um, ALA exhibits or attend ALA in some of the sessions as well. It's, um, I think Linda's going, it's about $350. Mm -hmm. That would be up this year's money. Yeah. End of June. And I can't go. Sorry. Sure, you can think about I'll be right yeah. there. Any other questions? So, did we have to change that? Four thousand to bump it up to six, maybe. I guess. Okay. Well, the day that you're talking about next March, so technically, that would be in this budget. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So if anybody is possibly considering, there should be, make sure there's a little bit more in there to cover, right? Yeah. Well, six will create a $12,000 appropriation. All right. Any other questions? I, I have a, a couple. Um, professional development, I just found it. OK, so it's under administ administration and general office. It's 50582 That's for this PLA, correct? I thought it was 48000 last time we looked at it. Did it go up a little more? That's where that money that he had taken out of the materials budget. I had asked him to remove the professional books from the materials collection, from the materials budget, because I thought the materials budget should only be for things for patrons. So because those things are primarily used behind the scenes for the library staff, I asked them to put it there and it ended up in the professional development line. So professional development is not just for staff training or? It, it is, those, it were, is. those are for I education. Have, okay, yeah, that's so, fine. Yeah. All right, and then it says, then I, I don't know if I missed this, consulting 27,000, are we planning something? IT, I think, often uses consultants to do some of their more highly technical work. Right. So that's like payroll? No, no, it's consultant. So we'll hire a firm that has the expertise to uh, to do a particular project. So we just moved to uh, Office 365 and put um, the Air Exchange server in the cloud. 
we hired a firm uh, called Vertac to do that, mm -hmm. and that was presented to the board this year uh, to do it. And I, I believe the cost was twelve or thirteen thousand dollars, if memory serves. So that's an extension of our payroll. Our department doesn't do it. We just sub it out to someone else, and we call it consulting. Is that it? What well, it's consultants? with a consulting firm that provides consultants who are experts in the, in the subject matter. Who perform the function because we don't, we can't. Uh, or do uh, they train us, do they help us? They, the there, is, there is knowledge transfer, uh, certainly as part of this, to make mm -hmm. sure that once they're gone that we're up and running and, and we can manage it on our own. Okay, so it's a, like, it is like training us plus they're, they're doing whatever it is and then... The focus is to, to actually complete the project. As part of the project, there is knowledge transfer to make sure that but, we're. But what is what's the basic premise of this? Is it they're performing a technical? I know we spoke about this a couple years ago about needing to have outsiders come in to perform certain functions that our department wouldn't be able to handle. Is that what this is? And I'm sure you always learn when somebody comes into your location and does something. But specifically, it's to accomplish something that our staff doesn't handle. In this particular case, our staff was not, uh, we're not experts in uh, putting up uh, Office 365 and, and putting the Exchange server in the cloud. Okay, and just 27,000, is that a few things? Is that just one thing you have in mind? Um, I don't know what that number really represents. Uh, I'd have to go back and uh, research that. I have to write that too. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, and then I had one other question. I want to make sure I'm adding these numbers correctly. We have total salaries. We have, which is three million three hundred something. Then I jump down the total fringe benefits. That's one million three. Um, I actually picked up the fifty thousand for professional development. So what I'm trying to say is I added these figures up, and it's over. Oh no, I missed something. Then there's total special fund items minus the sixteen thousand. It's over five million dollars, and that's basically salaries. Is that correct? It, it is compensation. I would not call professional mm -hmm. development compensation because the library benefits by that. But um, but when you combine employee fringe benefits with salaries, that will yes. be total compensation. So it is over five million dollars, and we're going to function on two million for the rest of the year for the library. Is that is that really all that that's that we need? I mean, I just wow. I didn't realize it was that small. You mean outside of salaries? Well, if salaries are five million mm -hmm. and our budget is only seven. Well, the folks still get pie chart and tell us the chart. salaries were the, were the largest part of was was Okay, but the point is, um, according to the way we're supposed to be utilizing our budget, only 51% 50, of it is supposed to be spent on um, providing services to the taxpayer. So if our salary is already five, I mean, we're like way under what we're supposed to be, the, well, how we're supposed to be functioning. I mean, five out of seven, there's only 2,000 left. So what's five million out of seven million? I don't even know, but I think it's a lot more than 51% of our budget. So you want to bump the budget up two more million so that we're at the no, I'm saying, <laughs> No, I'm saying that your payroll is out of control. I think it's alarming. I mean, uh, well, I mean, according to the standards, which every trustee gets, um, standard with the yeah, you actually have that copy if you wouldn't mind holding up that green book and everything. The Illinois standards, standards for public libraries, you're supposed to put uh, 12 percent, thank you, 12 percent of your or um. Operating budget is supposed to be committed to collections, and we have that at 12 percent. So, I mean, we try to align with all of the standards for public libraries, but the services um, can't be provided without the staff. They they are they are the service. Yeah. When, well, that's true, but I think I think that's really high when you look at it. It's it, it looks like we're not following. You may be following that, but in in terms of. Uh, the um, what is it, this thing I'm looking at? 
the ILCS, we're we're way over budgeted for staff salaries. I think we had our marketing person. Did Didn't they we were tell us we right were right in the we should be? We were like right in the median, just above the median. Who's okay. the marketing person? The, the, the consultant, consultant said you guys hired. Yeah, they, they told you that you're spending your money the way you should be? They said based on the other libraries that, were, yeah. that they had compared us to, we were just above the median. We weren't at the top. We weren't at the we top were in even three. High median. Middle. We were in the above the median. Well, that's definitely where we top. fall. But the point is, five million out of seven million is pretty high. With fifty-one percent of the money supposed to be spent on the uh, residents. But that is what you're looking at. Getting out of residents. I mean, our Something I read it at the last board meeting. According to the Illinois state statutes. I don't think there's anything in the statutes that tells me. Oh, it says right here. Uh, that needs to be spent on salaries versus. No, it's collection. called it's called spending. The majority of your spending is to be to the benefit of the majority of the taxpayers. The majority well, I think of the it taxpayers is. don't work in the library. Yeah, but care, well, care. any dollars spent on the. Employees is to the benefit. Yes, Carol. I, I think maybe that's true, but not to this. I think we need to rethink some of these figures. I mean, five out of seven million, that's quite high. Uh, yeah. We don't have such a large staff. But, Carol, you know, yes. what, what do people, when you read those letters that we get from the people, majority of are thanking us for the staff, for the help they get from our staff. Where does right. that money go to to pay for those people that the people, the taxpayers, are grateful for? Right. Well, so yeah, we have three floors that we have to add, and we're exactly. Up four this is a, a, a big large room, but that's certainly and, more and than seventy-one percent. Well, that's certainly something we can review. I just heard one of your supervisors has to go to two different floors because she manages two areas that are on two separate floors. I mean, there's a lot of ways to look at it. I'm just saying our our salaries. Compensation, professional development are 71% of our budget. That's high. And we, we've actually gone through our budget and we didn't even look at one aspect of maybe we're overspending somewhere, anywhere. Well, I just want to remind everybody that the, this, the benefits line does include an extra payment this year to IMRF just to mm -hmm. get our liability and exactly. save us money down the road. Exactly. So that is part of that. Because we voted for that so that we're not dinged later on. I know, but you know, the white elephant in the room we keep ignoring is we're already at 2.5 million underfunded and could go as high as 3.6. If we would have planned for IMRF, well, it would have been better. Yeah, we did plan for IMRF. We true. just spent 2 million to, to cover underfunded IMRF. That's quite costly in one year. Even our auditor yeah. made note of it. We, we right. knew that we were going to have to pay this extra amount. Right. We, had that we, we looked ahead. We said, this is coming. We understand it. This is what part of IMRF is. And we went into it with our eyes wide open, and that's what we decided to do. Well, so you did decide to do it. That's true. OK, Dad, so did you have I, I heard the mention that we, we have that extra payment this year. Which which is the number? I'm sorry. 500,000. It's on page 68, Dennis. Uh, about halfway down the page, you see something called employee fringe benefits. Yep. Uh, that says pension plan, uh, seven hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. So normally, that it should be about this to, next year. That number will be pulled out. Yeah. It will be down. It'll be lower. Yeah. It'll be lower. It'll, A lot lower. It'll it'll be, uh, it'll be between uh, two hundred and two thirty-five. It's a one-time payment. Right. Any other discussion? Yeah, right. yeah I, I, I just want to say, you know, I, I have no experience, so it's just, you know. Sorry, that was just my first <laughs> <laughs> So I, I just, you know, not having the experience, you know, other libraries and things like, it does sound high to me. But I think it's something that, you know, you just got to look at it a little bit, uh, a little bit closer. Dennis, you know, I, have, watch them. I have to tell you, when I first came here, I was hearing the numbers, you know, my teeth were like down here. I couldn't believe the, the money. But you, you sit in these meetings and you realize that this, there's a lot of stuff here that we have to pay for, you know? And, and think about it too. Um, if you remember the staff that we hired, librarians have to have a master's degree. Um, 
and you go to any other company and you have a master's degree, to be honest, usually you're paid yeah. more than you are paid here. I'm sorry to say, yeah. but it's, um, I think we're very competitive. I think we're very fair. Um, and I think it's always to look at that we want to make sure that people stay and that they're happy here. Uh -huh. And um, I don't think we're, obviously, I mean, they've even looked at, we're not the highest paid, but we're not the lowest. And that was always a concern that we were, we were a lot lower before um, compared to other libraries. Uh -huh. And now that we're at least we're competitive. Better than the competitive than the median, I'm hoping that the staff feels appreciated and that they want to stay and that they're a happy family. Because of having a, a consistent staff that the, that the patrons get to know and appreciate, that's got to be, that to me, that's huge. Because we were missing people and we don't want that to happen. All right. Thank you. Unless okay. there's any other discussion, I'll go for a yeah, I, I just hope yeah. you don't mind me asking a question. No, I mean, definitely not. You're going to have a huge, you're going to have a huge learning curve. So yeah. believe me, we we accept whatever your questions. Ask away. No. Yeah. Okay. Unless Thank there's you. any other questions, I'll ask for a roll call. Uh, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. We are approving the budget. The tentative yeah. budget to be published. Right. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to vote no. Okay. All right. Dennis? Yes. 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 Okay, so just uh, I want to remember that uh, at our June meeting we have a hearing on the tentative ordinance. So we start a little bit early. Uh, we start at uh, 6:55, and, and we take as long as we need to hear people as to whatever they might want to say about the public ordinance. We don't always have a lot of people here, but if you know people come, they can say whatever they want uh, at that public hearing. And so that's that'll be in the newspaper uh, with our tentative budget when the time of the meeting. Correct? Okay. All right. Fine. Let's go to the next item. Uh, I need a motion now to approve the expenditure, not to exceed 6600 from the Special Reserve Fund to purchase Hewlett Packard Storage Area Network Controllers from Berta, a Hewlett Packard authorized partner and reseller. Do I have such motion, Patty? Mm-hmm. Linda, okay. Please uh, tell us about this a little bit. So um, the hardware uh, purchase is to replace and upgrade the existing controllers in the uh, library's uh, storage area network. Uh, they're no longer supported. They're at the end of life. And um, in order to uh, continue on, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to replace them. Okay. Can you tell us what it means when uh, it says something's a pre-bid government contract? Is that what this is, and what does that mean? Yeah, it's actually a, uh, a little bit better than, uh, than pre-bid. Um, but the pre-bid contract is a, a price list that's uh, done through a, a consortium where they go out and they negotiate all the different types of equipment that uh, public entities use. So uh, since it's already been negotiated, uh, we can pull the lowest price off of that, con off of that contract uh, schedule and uh, and, uh, and use that instead of going out to bid, uh, which you would normally do for large uh, ticket items. Uh, in this case, uh, the pricing is uh, is a little bit better than uh, the pricing on the schedule. Uh, Vertec is a reseller. Uh, we've been using them to uh, we've been using them for some of our consulting. Uh, in particular, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we use them to. Uh, implement Office 365 this year, and uh, as a reseller, uh, they were happy to give us a little better discount than what the agreement pricing was. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> I'm just trying to figure out how, how, so how much storage are we actually getting as a result? I, I, I could get those. I could get those numbers uh, for you. I just don't have them in the room. Yeah. So. Any other questions? OK. 
Okay, we have a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Um, yes. Dennis? Yep. Daniel? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, that carries. So we turn to our last motion on the new business is K is to approve an expenditure not to exceed twelve thousand five hundred from the special reserve fund to purchase replacement Hewitt factory printers. Do I have such a motion? Ready? Second. And then okay. What uh oh. so um how old are these printers? Uh uh, the fleet overall is uh, in its 12th uh, service year, so I think we've uh, pretty much gotten our money out of them. Um, one thing I do want to note is that um, we're buying 10 fewer printers than we bought the previous time we did this 12 years ago. And uh, what we, you know, what we always do is look for ways to uh, consolidate and and uh, uh, reduce the amount of uh, equipment that we have. Uh, so, yeah, we have had some departures. Uh, we've taken those printers out of uh, uh, circulation. Of course, we're not going to find replacements for that. We have had some departments in close proximity to each other. And in those cases, uh, instead of not working two printers, one for Department A and one for Department B, and they're side by side, we've just combined and reduced into, uh, into one printer. So uh, we've been able to eliminate a number of units um, in this purchase. That's cool. Yeah, appreciate that. Just want, are these staff printers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? The uh, payroll program that we're looking at, this has nothing to do with the printing for that. This would be separate. I'm not aware of us looking at a payroll program. No, you're talking about payroll consultants. Um, Passport. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We uh, have unfinished business listed on the agenda, but I don't think we have any actual um, unfinished business here. Um, so um, what I think we we'll want to do is go into executive session. But this time, I'm asking for a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters, specifically the director's review. Um, do I have such a motion? Patty? Mm -hmm. And then? Okay. Um, I think we need a roll call. Right? Yes. 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 Yes.
Um, is there any other business? No. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, so do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Annie? Second. Linda? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Can you adjourn?